welcome to the Autocar Show. Now today we have a big, big comparison and it's not big in terms of size but it's big simply because the Alto is the biggest, highest selling car in the Indian market. It's selling obscene number of cars every month, year on year. But fact remains is it's really had no serious competitor except for a few from its own stable. Well, Hyundai have now said that they're all ready to face this competition and they've put the Eon out there bang smack plum against the Alto. Does the Eon have what it takes to take this on? Well, from the looks of it, most definitely. <laughs> Eon looks designed for tomorrow and in contrast, the Alto looks quite aged. The cuts and creases of the Eon all flow along the car creating a form that's really pleasing to the eye. The smartly detailed front bumper and rising shoulder line give it a sporty air and the crescent shaped tail lamps look really great. The Alto is all too square in comparison, quite literally. It's boxy, angular and very old generation. There's no doubt that if you want a car that will impress, the Eon it is. Being inside the Eon actually feels like being in an entire different generation. Feels like I came from black and white movies into a colour picture. This is so much more futuristic, it's so much better quality. Everything from little things like the switch gear, the knobs, the central console, the plastics, it all feels much, much better inside the Eon. And it also feels lots more spacious, a lot more airy, the beige gives it an open feeling. The seats themselves are extremely comfortable. <laughs> Black and beige plastics of the Eon appear quite plush for a car of this value and fit and finish is good too. Storage is all over this little car from the front door pockets to the scoop on the dash and the large glove box, also central console areas. However, despite the wow factor, there are a few things that we did not like, like the fidgety central air vent and the A-pillar which does hamper visibility. In contrast, the Alto feels better as far as visibility goes, but everything else falls short. Storage is not as generous, everything else looks old school and plastics are not as great as the Eons. Panel gaps on the glove box and exposed screws make it feel like a budget car. The boot too is a small area and this is where the Eon scores again with a generous 215 litre boot. That may be at the back, but under the hood, it's a different story. The Eon is powered by a 3-cylinder 814cc engine with just 55 bhp, whereas the Alto gets the K10 996cc with 67 bhp. And what's on paper does translate onto the road. The K10 engine feels really nice in the Alto. Um, it's great off the line. It's responsive and what's really nice about this engine is that it's just so, so drivable. Even in the city, you can amble around higher gears, lower RPMs. You can be a lazy driver. You don't need to shift gears too much. Just put your foot down, picks up and moves on. It's a little bit more refined than the Eon, uh, but you still hear it when you rev really hard. And of course, there is that gearbox whine. There is a little jerkiness at low speeds in the Alto, but once you get past that, this engine is the more responsive and the more refined of the two. Path throttle responses are also better on the Alto. The Eon's gear ratios mask its power deficit nicely, but that's only up to 60 km per hour where it keeps up with the Alto. Beyond that, the Alto is the clear winner. The Eon's shorter gears ensure that you have to change quite often, especially in city traffic. In comparison, the Alto is easier to drive. 
The gearbox on the Eon is a bit notchy too and the Altos feels a whole lot nicer to use. The shorter ratios of the Eon also affects its fuel economy in the city. But on the highway, it's the Eon's taller fifth that allows it to narrow the gap. And when you take the average, it's really neck to neck. The small dimensions of both cars make them very easy to drive in the city. Whilst none can match the likes of a Figo in the right handling compromise, they're both quite different especially as far as the steering's go. Even though it's a little heavier than that of the Eon on the whole, uh, it's still light and easy enough for the city. But when you gain speed, it gives you a lot more confidence. It's consistent in the way it reacts. In comparison, the Eon steering is light and easy in the city, but it has a certain awkwardness, especially when you go off-centre. It requires quite a lot of input initially to start turning and then it suddenly gets sharp and makes it a bit unnerving. It also doesn't self-center and feels numb at higher speeds. So overall, the Alto steering is the one that we liked better. Round the corners too, the Alto rolls less and it just feels the safer, more sure-footed one of the two. But it's a different story when it comes to straight line stability. Here's where the two cars are pretty similar but we found that the Eon had better brakes. Especially over bad roads like this at low speeds, you feel that the Eon has a slight edge to its ride quality over the Alto and that's simply because there's less body movement. You don't get sort of tossed around in the back seat. You're moving less side to side and it's got a soft edge over the bumps. However, if there are some really big potholes, it does get caught out like that. The Alto does feel more pliant at higher speeds, but the backseat passengers get tossed around a fair bit. Now, features are an important part of this game, so let's take a look at the list. The Alto VXI comes at 3.2 lakh X showroom Delhi and comes with the power steering, the front power windows, central locking, and internally adjustable outside mirrors. The Eon's Magna at 3.4 lakh X showroom Delhi gets all of the above plus a steering tilt adjust. But you have to remember that it doesn't have the tack and the parcel tray like the Alto. So is the Alto really a pushover because it's the much older car in this comparison? Well, you have to remember that Maruti has made consistent upgrades to this car over the years to keep it going strong. And mechanically, it's still a very sound machine, be it steering, be it suspension, or be it performance. This K10 engine is really the better engine to drive. It's peppy and it's refined. Now, you can't forget the value for money that the Alto proposes, which is one of the core strengths of this vehicle. Now, in the tier three cities, it even has an 800cc engine, which makes it better value. The Eon comes in with an 800cc engine, and of course, this is no K10. It's not as peppy, but it's still adequate enough and it does the job. Now the Eon has a lot more going for it as well. It has the bigger boot, it has very comfortable interiors, it's got the edge in the ride quality. And of course, when you look at it, the looks in the interiors are just eons and eons ahead of the Alto. It looks like a different generation of vehicle. Be it the quality of the interiors or the futuristic looks, this is the car that you really want to take home despite it being a little bit more expensive than the Alto. Don't go away, stay tuned because right after this break, Holmes tells you what you can expect at Auto Expo.